And we're still continuing with the application of IFRS 15, Revenue Recognition. Let's start by reading the question. Pink Ink sells appliances to consumers as well as extended warranties. A customer purchases a dishwasher with a two-year extended warranty for a special price of $1,000 on August 8th. The customer pays using their credit card and they take delivery immediately. The regular price for the dishwasher is $900 and the extended warranty normally costs $220, but Pink Ink is offering a special deal for the month of August to boost sales. The dishwasher costs Pink Ink $700 to purchase from the manufacturer and comes with a one-year manufacturer's warranty, which stipulates that the manufacturer will cover parts and services to fix appliances that do not perform to specifications at no cost to the owner. The extended warranty covers the dishwasher for an additional two years after the manufacturer's warranty ends for parts and service. When should Pink Ink recognize revenue? Well, of course, we're going to start by applying each of the steps in the revenue recognition process. I'm going to just page down. Step 1. Identify the contract. It's clear that Pink Ink and the customer appear to both be committed to the performance obligations. The product's been identified, a dishwasher and actually an extended warranty. Payment terms are known. The customer will pay immediately with a credit card. There is commercial substance because Pink is exchanging one type of asset, a dishwasher, for another type of asset, cash. Collection is assured because the customer will pay by credit card, which is the same as receiving cash because Pink will receive the cash from the customer's credit card company by the end of the day. Therefore, all the criteria are met, so we have identified a contract. Let's move on to step two. Step two, identify the separate performance obligations. There are two performance obligations. Performance obligation one is to deliver the dishwasher with the manufacturer's warranty. The dishwasher and the manufacturer's warranty are interdependent and interrelated with each other, and therefore together they make up one performance obligation. However, the extended warranty is sold separately and therefore its performance obligation is distinct, meaning that it can benefit the customer on its own, separately. There are therefore two performance obligations, a good, which is the dishwasher, and a service, which is the extended warranty. Let's move on to step number three. Determine the transaction price. The transaction price is given. It's $1,000. Moving on to step four. Allocate the transaction price to the separate performance obligations. Let's just move the page down because I need some room. When a company has to allocate the transaction price between separate performance obligations, they have to base the allocation on the individual obligations relative values. The best measure of value is the amount the company could sell the goods or services for on a standalone basis. This is called the standalone selling price, and we know the standalone selling price for both of these products. For the dishwasher and the manufacturer's warranty, the standalone price is $900. And for the extended warranty, it's $220. This is the best measure of value, the amount the company could sell the good or service for on a standalone basis. The total, $1,120. This is the usual standalone total, but the customer has only been asked to pay $1,000. So how do we divide that $1,000 between the dishwasher and the extended warranty, two separate performance obligations? We use this to determine their relative value. 900 divided by 1,120 multiplied by 1,000 is equal to $803.57, rounded to the nearest penny. 220 divided by 1,120 times 1,000 is equal to $196.43. Add those two amounts together, what does it equal? $1,000. Rounded to the nearest penny. So the allocated value of the dishwasher performance obligation is $803.57, and the allocated value of the extended warranty is $196.43. We're going to use these values when we recognize the revenue. What would happen if the standalone price was not available? 
If information with regards to standalone prices is not available, the company must use their best estimate of what the good or service might sell for as a standalone unit. We'll go through two other alternatives in a future video. We've completed step number four. Let's move on to step number five. We have to analyze each of the performance obligations separately when there's more than one. So let's start with the performance obligation one, the dishwasher and the one year manufacturer's warranty. Revenue is recognized when there's been a transfer of control in the case of a good. On August 8th, what happened? The customer leaves with the dishwasher, so there is a transfer of control. Pink actually meets multiple identifiers of this transfer of control, but I'm going to focus on the risks and rewards of ownership. On August 8th, the customer has the risk of ownership, meaning that if the customer accidentally damages the dishwasher on the way home in the car, it will be their problem, not Pink's. So the customer has 100% of the risks of ownership. The customer also has the rewards of ownership because they can install the dishwasher or they can sell it to their neighbor or they can simply throw it away if they wanted to. The customer, after they take the dishwasher, has the right to do whatever they want with the dishwasher and therefore they have the rewards of ownership. On August 8th, the customer has the risks and rewards of ownership and therefore control has been transferred. Let's move on to performance obligation number two. The extended warranty. This is a service and therefore we have to analyze when Pink is performing the service. On August 8th, the customer takes the dishwasher home. Has Pink provided the customer with any services with regards to the extended warranty? And the answer is no. Pink has provided no services on the extended warranty on August 8th. When do the services begin on the extended warranty? I'm just going to put the page down. The extended warranty services will begin on August 8th of next year. In fact, in one year's time, Pink will start providing services equally over the two years, 124th per month. Let's do our recommendation. Pink Inc. must recognize the revenue from the dishwasher on August 8th because on that date, they meet all the revenue recognition criteria, including the transfer of control. Also on August 8th, Pink must recognize the liability for the extended warranty because they owe the customer two years of extended warranty services on August 8th. Let's do the entries.